The internet runs on code. But code isn't enough. Behind every deploy is a race against complexity. Cloud scale, cost spike, AI rewrites the rules, tools break, titles change. This is the world of DevOps, cloud, and software at scale. Built on sleepless nights. On-call alerts, silent fixes. We don't just build features. We build the backbone of the modern world. This is Run It Bear Podcast. Subscribe. Ship smarter, sleep better. You're listening to Run It Bear Developer Podcast, where we strip tech down to its core. Each episode blends insights from our expert engineers, the developer community, and the support of AI. Hello, and welcome to a new deep dive here on Run It Bear. Great to be here. We're jumping into something that's a uh probably been rattling around in your head if you're slinging code these days. You know how we do it? We take the sources, the key ideas, sometimes those surprising facts, and we really, well, we unpack them for you. Think of it as getting the core insights without having to wade through everything yourself. Exactly. And hey, we've been getting some really great feedback on these deep dives lately. Seriously, it helps us figure out what you actually want to hear about. Yeah, it's super helpful. So if you're digging what we're doing here on Runa Bear, honestly, let us know in the comments. And if you've got a fellow dev, maybe a manager, or just someone curious who ought to hear this, you know, hit that share button. Please do. Okay, today we are tackling the big one. What are these AI coding tools actually doing to our skills as developers? Are they leveling us up or are they maybe, kind of subtly, eating away at the stuff we rely on? Mm. We've been digging into a really, really insightful perspective on this. It felt like a bit of a gut check moment, honestly, reading about this idea of like rebuilding your coding brain for the AI age. Yeah, our goal here is to look at the main arguments being made maybe explore some of those, let's say, less comfortable potential downsides of relying too much on AI help. Right. And crucially, find some real actionable things you can do to make sure you're not just you know, shipping faster, but actually growing your skills, your mastery. Get ready for some points that might uh, hit a bit close to home. Uh, yeah, maybe a few knowing chuckles about our shared struggles. <laughs> Hopefully some clarity, too. Hopefully. All right, let's get into it. The whole thing kind of kicks off with this moment that just felt so, so real. The author describes being on a new machine, right? Her co-pilot isn't running it, and they just freeze, mm -hmm. staring at the screen, needing a basic loop, in Lua, of all things, mm -hmm. for K J E N in, wait, is it pairs? I pairs? <laughs> what even is Lua? Like, total blank. Oh, man, I felt that. It's that terrifying moment where your brain just feels empty, yeah, right? Uh, like, the cash is just gone. Totally. And it nails the central idea perfectly. These tools, you know, Copilot, Cursor, Code Whisperer, all of them, they definitely make us faster, no question. Oh, yeah. But is that speed coming at the cost of, well, actual thinking? Mm -hmm. Are we maybe just accepting the autocomplete like it's gospel and forgetting why the code works? Right. Or even how the basic pieces fit together. Yeah, exactly. And it's not just one person having an off day with syntax. I feel like I see this conversation bubbling up everywhere. You see devs online saying things like, okay, seriously, ever since I started really leaning on Copilot, I worry that if you took it away, I'd struggle to do basic stuff. Right. And the insight here is about this trade-off that maybe we're not even consciously making. We're swapping potentially raw speed for deep mastery. Mm -hmm. We're swapping autocomplete convenience for you know genuine understanding. We get laser focused on shipping the next feature fast, maybe without realizing we're sacrificing the chance to build fundamental skills. It forces you to pause and ask that slightly uncomfortable question, doesn't it? Am I actually truly learning something right now? Or am I just getting incredibly efficient at copy pasting, essentially? That's the heart of it. That question really landed like a ton of bricks for me. Because, you know, how we learn coding traditionally, yeah. it was all about repetition, right? Yeah. Building that muscle memory. The reps. You wrote loops, you sorted lists, you built classes. Again and again and again, you built intuition through sheer volume. I mean, I could probably still whiteboard a passable, if ugly, quick sort yeah. if you dragged me out of bed at 3 a.m. Or maybe not anymore. Uh, well, AI fundamentally changes that whole loop. It's sort of bypasses the need for that repetition by just suggesting the code. Yeah. Which on the surface sounds amazing, right? Mm. Skip the grunt work. Yeah. But the analogy used in the source material is spot on. Mm -hmm. It's like trying to get strong at the gym by watching someone else lift the weights for you. Oh, that's good. Yeah, totally. The AI just swoops in and lifts that struggle weight. It writes just enough to remove the friction. But the friction, 
that's where the learning sticks. That's how the knowledge actually gets embedded in your brain. Mm. And you hear developers admitting it. I've gotten so reliant on Copilot. Now I just blank out if I have to write something simple from scratch. Which brings us to the fundamentals, like syntax. Yeah. Okay, nobody's saying you need to memorize every single semicolon rule for every language. Right, it's not about that. But syntax is the foundation, and you might think, ah, who cares, autocomplete handles it. Until it doesn't, until you're offline, or you're debugging some really subtle bug where the syntax is the entire problem, or you're dealing with some weird edge case that AI just didn't anticipate. Or, maybe worse, the autocomplete confidently gives you something that looks right but is totally wrong for your specific situation. Hmm. And if you don't have that foundational syntax knowledge, you might not even clock it. Yeah, you just accept it. There's this phrase used, existential dread, about realizing you might actually struggle to spin up even a basic function or script without your tools. And look, this isn't about being anti-AI or being a Luddite. Not at all. No. It's just acknowledging that memory, syntax, and... Yeah, even the struggle, but that's how developer skill was traditionally built. We kind of handed off the struggle part to the AI, and maybe the skill didn't stick quite as well. But man, shipping fast feels good, doesn't it? You type half a function name, hit tab, and bam, a whole chunk of code just appears. Oh, the dopamine hit is undeniable. It's like having, yeah, like a thousand stack overflow tabs open and whispering the answers right into your ear. It's addictive. And that, according to this perspective, is precisely where the trap lies. We start mistaking, I shipped it fast, for I actually understood it. Hmm. Think about a junior dev armed with powerful AI tools. They could look incredibly productive, right? Shipping features may be way faster than juniors could a few years ago. Totally. Looks amazing on the surface. But can they explain why that generated code works? Can they really anticipate how it might fail under different conditions? That's the scary part. We trade that potential long-term deep understanding for the immediate buzz of getting something out the door. Yeah. And sure, the code works for now, but code you didn't fully grasp when you wrote it, that's just future maintenance debt waiting to happen. Absolutely. Those blocks of AI code you didn't really scrutinize, they're potential bugs just lurking. And believe me, debugging code you fundamentally don't understand is way more painful and costly than writing it a bit slower, but actually knowing what's going on. Tell me about it. Plus, AI has its limits here, right? It's amazing at matching patterns based on you know tons and tons of data, but it doesn't truly understand the specific architecture, the state, the nuances of your system. Good point. So it's probably going to suggest the most statistically common solution it's seen, which might not be the right or the most sustainable solution for your particular context. So speed gives you that quick burst, that sprint, but then the learning curve kind of flattens out. Whereas understanding, okay, it's a slower build initially, maybe more frustrating. It's definitely more frustrating sometimes. But that knowledge compounds over time. The truly great engineers, they aren't just fast typists. They're deep thinkers. Their code holds up. Their understanding lets them build systems that last. Speed without that depth. You're just like accelerating toward the wall of future debugging pain. And nowhere does that become clearer than when things inevitably break. Debugging. That's the real stress test for AI reliance. Oh, yeah. You simply cannot effectively debug a system or even a complex piece of code that you never truly understood how it worked in the first place. I mean, just picture it. You ask a junior dev, maybe someone who's only ever coded with heavy AI assistance, to track down a really tricky bug in a complex system. You can practically see the panic in their eyes, right? Totally. Debugging is the ultimate test. It's where your mental model of how everything fits together either holds up or just completely falls apart. Exactly. And someone who's maybe spent a year just pacing in AI snippets hasn't had the chance to build that robust mental model. What happens when it's a subtle timing issue, a race condition, or some weird state mutation the AI couldn't possibly have predicted? Right. Or the logs are just gibberish because you don't actually grasp the underlying flow of data or control. AI struggles there. It can't reason deeply about system state or complex asynchronous interactions in your specific setup. And don't forget the infamous AI hallucinations. Oh, God, yeah. Code that looks totally plausible, maybe even elegant, but is using methods that don't exist or relies on subtly broken logic or incorporates patterns that are way out of date. You trust it, you merge it, and then suddenly everything's on fire at 2 a.m. and you're scrambling. Look, AI can definitely be a useful assistant during debugging. It can help parse logs, suggest potential areas to look at, absolutely. Sure, yeah. But it cannot fundamentally understand your specific system the way you need to. 
that deep understanding is still your job. And if you skip the hard work of building it by just pasting code, well, good luck debugging that mess. This really ties into something else brought up in this perspective, the way our relationship with places like Stack Overflow might be changing, maybe even declining in value for learning. Interesting point. Look, Stack Overflow, it wasn't always fun. It could be intimidating, sometimes downright hostile, let's be uh, honest. Understatement. But it forced you to think, to articulate your problem really clearly just to have a chance of getting a decent answer. You had to read through existing discussions, compare different solutions, try to figure out the why. It was often painful, yeah, but it was incredibly effective learning disguised as just asking for help. And that's what gets lost, potentially, when you can yeah. just get an instant snippet from chat, GPT, or Copilot. That messy often frustrating but ultimately valuable interaction disappears. Right. There's no community pushback, no debate over the best way, no accidental exposure to deeper concepts while reading through answers. As the source material points out, reading those discussions between experienced devs wasn't just about copying the final answer. It was about absorbing the reasoning behind it. Exactly. So made you do the work. You learn from formulating the question. You learn from the nitpicky comments. You learn from seeing five different answers arguing with each other. AI. It just gives you the statistically most likely sequence of tokens, even if it's subtly wrong for you. There's no real mentorship, no shared struggle, no foundation building. It feels like we traded this rich, albeit sometimes difficult, learning ecosystem for instant gratification. Which brings us right back to that fundamental distinction. Knowing the what versus understanding the why. Mm -hmm. Take a simple function, right? Knowing what it is, okay, it's a block of code you can reuse, that's basic stuff. Mm. But understanding why it works the way it does. How parameters get passed under the hood, how memory is allocated and cleaned up on the call stack, what happens with closures or recursion, that's the real depth. And AI-assisted coding, because it's so focused on just giving you the what the working code snippet, it often lets you completely skip the why. Yeah, you can grab code that implements, say, a complex design pattern, but do you actually understand the principles that make that pattern useful? Or it's trade-offs? It's like getting directions straight to the fancy rooftop garden, but you have no idea about the building's foundation, the plumbing, the electrical systems. You can enjoy the view, sure, but you can't possibly build onto it or fix it properly when something goes wrong downstairs. And that deep understanding, that why, that's your superpower as a developer. That's what lets you debug effectively, refactor scary legacy code with confidence, optimize performance beyond just applying surface level suggestions, and actually innovate, build something new. Yeah. Truly great developers, they understand the systems they operate in, not just the individual lines of code they type or paste. And there's a great line summarizing this. Knowing how something works is good, but knowing why it works that way, that's when you start building things worth remembering. Okay, okay. It's easy to feel a bit uh, doom and gloom about all this. Like, are we all just destined to become shallow prompt engineers? Hmm. Hopefully not. Thankfully, no. The perspective we looked at doesn't just diagnose the problem. It offers some really solid, actionable ways we can push back and actually, you know, rebuild that coding brain. Strategy number one, learn with the AI. Don't just passively use it. Right. Treat it like Maybe a very fast, sometimes overconfident junior developer you're mentoring. That's a good flam. Don't just blindly accept the first suggestion it spits out. Interrogate it. Ask yeah. it questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, why did you pick this solution? What are the alternatives? What are the trade-offs here? Pause. Think. Question. Verify everything. Use the AI suggestion as a starting point for your own learning, not the final word. And strategy two, which is huge. Find your tribe. Seriously, deep learning doesn't happen in isolation with just you and a chatbot. Cool. Growth really happens in community, whether that's a Discord server, a subreddit, contributing to open source, even just active discussions within your own team. Engage. Ask questions. Offer your own code for review. Review other people's code thoughtfully. Get feedback. That moment when someone points out something you totally missed or asks a question that forces you to rethink your whole approach that's invaluable. And building on that community aspect, yeah. elevate your code reviews. There shouldn't just be a quick scan and an NGTM Rubber stamp. Ugh, yeah. Guilty as charged sometimes. Yeah, all are. Time pressure is real. But try to use them as opportunities for knowledge transfer. Ask those why questions. Hey, why did you choose this pattern here instead of that one? What other approaches did you consider? How might this break under load or with weird input? Even just one thoughtful question per review can significantly lift the whole team's understanding. Okay, this leads to the strategy that 
I don't know, resonates most with me personally, probably because I've felt both the pain and the payoff, build stuff from scratch. Ah, uh, yes. The developer equivalent of leg day. Exactly. It's going to be slower. It's probably going to feel frustrating sometimes. But pick something foundational, maybe a super simple WebSocket server or a basic router in pure JavaScript, or even just parsing a specific file format and build it without leaning on frameworks or AI autocomplete for the core logic. The struggle, the pain of figuring it out, that's actually the whole point. Right. That struggle builds understanding that compounds over time. And maybe just as important, it builds what the source calls unfiltered confidence. You know how it works deep down, because you wrestled with every single messy part of it. Maybe try an AI-free weekend project sometime. Seriously. The ugliest, buggiest code you write that way will teach you more fundamental lessons than weeks of smooth sailing with AI assistance. You learn why those frameworks and tools exist and what problems they actually solve. So true. Your worst code often teaches the best lessons. So let's try and wrap this all up. What's the real value proposition for a developer in this, you know, AI-powered future? This perspective makes it really clear. You are not just a human API for ChatGPT. Please no. Your job isn't just typing symbols. Your core job is thinking. It's modeling complex problems, yeah. architecting solutions that are robust and maintainable, debugging the inevitable chaos, asking the insightful questions that AI can't even formulate yet. Yeah, if you only operate at that surface level, just accepting AI output without digging deeper into the why, mm. you do risk becoming somewhat replaceable over time. Mm. But if you consciously lean into building that deep understanding of systems, of patterns, of trade-offs, of fundamentals, you become the developer everyone else turns to when the AI gets stuck or gives bad advice, which, let's be real, it will. Exactly. The real dev flex, as they put it, in 2025 and beyond, it's not about how fast you can churn out code with AI. It's about the depth of your understanding. Yeah. It's about designing systems that don't fall over. It's about being able to untangle those nightmare bugs. Mm -hmm. It's about clearly explaining complex technical concepts. It's about spotting the subtle architectural mistakes that the AI completely missed. Like the source says, when the AI gets stuck, your depth is what saves the sprint. Couldn't agree more. The future isn't just about who uses AI. It's about who understands deeply enough to use it wisely and knows what lies beyond its capabilities. That feels like the absolute critical takeaway here. Use these amazing tools. Absolutely. They're incredibly powerful and they're not going anywhere. For sure. But don't let them steal the essential struggle, the friction that builds genuine, lasting understanding and mastery. Actively fight for that depth by questioning everything, by engaging with other developers, and yeah, by sometimes just getting your hands dirty and building things the hard way. Don't let yourself become just a human autocomplete. It definitely takes a conscious shift in how you approach learning and working, but mm. it feels essential for long-term growth and, frankly, job security and satisfaction. Totally. So here's a little something for you to chew on this week while you're coding. What's just one fundamental concept? or maybe a small system, even something you think you already know pretty well, that you could try building or rebuilding from scratch. Just embrace the pain for a bit, you know, to really lock down that deep understanding. Good challenge. All right, that wraps up this deep dive on rebuilding your coding brain in the age of AI. Thanks so much for tuning in and thinking through this with us here on Runet Bear. Yeah, thanks for listening. We really hope this sparked some useful thoughts, maybe gave you something concrete to try out, let us know what you think in the comments. Do you agree, disagree? What strategies work for you? And definitely share this with your coding friends if you found it valuable. We'd love to hear from you. We'll catch you on the next Dupe Dive where we'll tackle another interesting topic. Until then, keep learning, keep asking why, and keep building. Thanks for tuning in to Run It Bear. Like, subscribe, and share. For more interesting Deep Dives, join our blog. Link is in description. Catch you next time.